Hi all, welcome to uh, this session where we will discuss uh, uh, organizational structure and design. Uh, as we have discussed several times in the previous sessions, uh, organizational structure is the way how uh, the top management visualizes the organization and then uh, designs uh, the organization in accordance with uh, uh, various uh, yardsticks, various parameters like uh, the hierarchical structure, the uh, nature of uh, business, the products and services or the projects depending upon uh, the nature of the organization, the size of the organization, the geographic spread of the organization, any of these could uh, uh, essentially be the, uh, the yardsticks or the parameters as to how uh, an organization structure should be designed and uh, hence the, the, the structure of organization might vary from one to the other um, uh, which is determined by all those factors which we had just uh, uh, shared. Okay, so let's let's take a deeper dive into organization structure uh, to, to quickly understand uh, what uh, it has in it and what are the various uh, components that uh, uh, determine an organization structure. Okay, there we go. Right, so defining uh, organization structure, what, what determines the organization structure? Um, it could be by virtue of the work specialization. Um, say, for instance, a firm might have, might have uh, various uh, uh, specialized activities. Um, say, for instance, a, a manufacturing concern, uh, say, uh, making the car right uh, so making a car it's uh, the, the 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 company may have a a, a very standard uh, uh, um, a very uh, fixed uh, va value chain through which the product moves from uh, the initial stage of uh, assembling the raw materials to uh, to making the various uh, uh, to, to uh, you know, uh, bringing the various parts, uh, uh, making of the engine uh, unless it is outsourced to to uh, making the making of the car and then warehousing it and then uh, retailing it. So the entire supply chain there is a certain structure and and hence the organization may have to be designed in accordance with the specialization of the work. So during the process you may have several. Uh, um, departments, as the second yardstick suggests, you may have the department of uh, technology, department of engineering, department of assembly, manufacturing, department of quality, uh, department of maintenance, or department of uh, warehousing, uh, logistics, supply chain. So, if you have, um, if if the organization wants to design its hierarchy or its structure according to the departments, which means a lot. That could be the yardstick, or uh, chain of command can can be um, an age-old, uh, um, a very conventional, very age-old way of uh, designing the, uh, the the structure based on the hierarchy, right from the top to the middle to the bottom, the uh, CXOs or the strategic executives to the managerial executives to the non-managerial staff. Uh, that's a a, a simple. Uh, hierarchical structure where chain of command determines the uh, structure of the organization. Span of control, what do we mean by span of control? Span of control is where you have a, a, a very uh, clear and a quantitative count of how many uh, employees report to a manager, right? So what is your, your total um, strength of the organization and how are you distributing the strength uh, by the span of control how many reportees are going to report to a manager that's the span of the, the, the measure of the span of control of that particular manager or, or leader right if, if 40, uh, 40 employees report to me as their manager which means my span of control uh, is these 40 members, the staff of 40 members and I am responsible for uh, uh, the conduct, the performance, the resource allocation, the, the job allocation, um, the performance 
measurement, performance evaluation, um, performance management, the learning, development, training, uh, compensation uh, management, um, or uh, the uh, elevations, promotions, bonuses, hikes. So that's that's uh, um, what is precisely meant by span of control. And span of control also determines as to what is the structure of your organization, structure, your organization uh, because you need to know uh, what is your total staff and how are you distributing the staff in accordance with their jobs and tasks to various managers and hence how are you defining the span of control of each manager so that you have a clear understanding, clear um, uh, outcome of the structure of the organization. One more thing that determines is whether your decision making in the organization is centralized or decentralized. What do we mean by each of these? Centralized is centralized organizations usually possible in reasonably relatively smaller organizations where the strength of the organization is, is not more than uh, anywhere around um, 100, 200 or 250 where you have, uh, you have the decision making concentrated among few hands or uh, one most important person determining, deciding uh, the entire uh, course of activity. Such, such organizations are uh, de centralized decision making uh, organizations whereas as the organizations keep growing into bigger sizes, uh, it, may be, it may be found difficult to run a centralized way of decision making and hence that's when the organization decides to create more power centers, more decision making centers. So they decide to empower uh, their managers, their uh, uh, staff and decision making is distributed uh, across several centers, several points uh, rather than concentrating it among few or one hand, one person. So that is a decentralized structure. So there is a significant difference between the organizations the structures of the organization with centralized decision making and decentralized decision making. Likewise, uh, formalization, you have formal organizations where you need the, the, the structures of the hierarchy to be extremely uh, standard, conventional and uh, predetermined, defined where there, where there is there is least scope for flexibility uh, and, and uh, where you have fixated structures whereas some organizations may not uh, well the formal, formal structure you may again you may have to refer to the manufacturing concerns where there is hardly any room for uh, rearrangement or reorganization or, or creative uh, 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 rearrangements or flexibility they are uh, they have they have they are designed to function to operate in a in a prefixed, predetermined manner with, with extremely rigid standard operating procedures and processes. So those are uh, the formal structures, whereas informal structures where the teams could be um, flexible, the structures of the teams could be flexible, more so when you are dealing with organizations that are driven sheer by projects and they, they which move from project to project where you have concurrently simultaneously several projects running and the project start projects terminate and another project begins and uh, which is a, a scenario where you have to be flexible with uh, uh, the composition of the teams right so the resources may have to be reorganized may have to be rehashed rearranged uh, redeployed across the functions across the verticals across the projects so such pro uh, organizations have, have more flexible uh, hierarchical designs. Um, okay, so those are the factors that determine the uh, structure of the organizations. Organization design decisions, so it could be either mechanistic, as I said, formal mechanistic, which are relatively more, more rigid, inflexible and static and fixated, predetermined, whereas organic where uh, they they can they can uh, uh, they can form they can reorganize they can rearrange as per the need as per the demand of the situation which is where i may have to refer to such organizations called which are called as uh, 
uh, agile organizations. The agile is is a new philosophy that has been that has been making its presence very strongly felt in the last uh, ten years. Organizations are are quickly making a transition from the erstwhile conventional or what they refer to as a waterfall method of operating the projects to agile. Well, waterfall or the conventional method is more rigid, static, and and inflexible, which cannot, uh, which the organizations can't afford to uh, pace up with the competition outside. You need to be more agile, more flexible, more adaptable. You need to understand the requirement of situation rather than um, expecting the situation to to be accommodated according to your structure, right? So organic. Makes that flexibility possible. Contingency factors, as you know. So as as we just discussed, we need to be adaptable. Times change, uh, and and the requirements of the scenario change. The competition changes, and uh, the organization should be should be so designed that they are they they are ready to confront the contingencies. So for instance. as we may have discussed several times there are some radical shifts that are happening in the that have happened in the last 10 years and and some of the very few smart agile organizations have been so quick in uh, making the transition and there are also such organizations which which uh, um failed to see the the shift coming and uh, they are like left behind like you can recall many organizations which because of their inflexibility lack of adaptability lack of uh, agility have uh, failed to catch up with the wave like nokia motorola in the telef- telephony sector or uh, uh, bsnl uh, docomo tata docomo in the te- te- telecom sector um, or the um, uh, to 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 name a few right so contingency is is always around the corner and uh, adaptability is what it takes to make uh, make uh, a smooth sail even through uncertainty right uh, what are the common designs we'll we'll take a look at uh, the common designs like hierarchical structure pyramidic structure etc we'll take a deep dive as we go along okay org structure uh we we have discussed this purposes of organization uh, organizing uh, how does it help how does it uh, help to design your organization into certain structure may it be pyramid structure may it be formal may it be flat structure or whatever design but what why do you do so what is the purpose uh, these are some of the purposes we can quickly scroll through it divides work into specific jobs and departments yes it assigns tasks and responsibilities it, it well, in other words it it leaves no room for ambiguity confusion as to who does what which to which job what is the flow of a job it it starts where it proceeds where and it terminates where these kind of basic questions are are are, are uh, very well addressed by having a very uh, clear structure in place coordinates diverse organizational tasks yes clusters the jobs into units so uh, it 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 brings the jobs into certain homogeneous uh, collection rather than uh, getting uh, confused or getting um, puzzled at uh, a cluster of jobs you know when you have a structure in place uh, the flow of the jobs can happen in in a, in a very methodical uh, manner establishes relationships workplace relationships establishes formal lines of authority who reports to whom who is the boss how many what is the span of control of of a manager what is the size of a team and what are the goals the the targets etc allocates and deploys organizational resources resource allocation becomes much easier and uh, clearer okay so those are a few of the purposes of organizing uh, the the structure the design of an organization okay work specialization as we have discussed degree to which tasks in the organization are divided into separate jobs with each step completed by a different person so work depending upon the work specialization as we have discussed with an example of an automotive company uh, a structure in place makes the specialization work specialization uh, much easier uh, to understand 
okay departmentalization can be one base for uh, or can be a contributor to organization but departmentalization can be done on the basis of what it could be functional departmentalization like functional various functions finance function marketing function human resource function operations functions quality function um uh, or uh, um uh, compensation function or uh, a learning and development function uh, or uh, audit and uh, accounting controls function or legal function um, or occupational safety function whatever various functions that our organization comprises that can be the basis for departmentalization likewise uh, product when you are when 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 the identity of your company is the products that you make you may be making pcs the company may be making pcs may be making tablets may be making pods may be uh, making the headsets may be making um, uh, mobile phones so if those are the identity uh, of your company then that can be the basis for departmentalization right so that's geographic when your geographic spread is more prominent than any other yardstick you are in uh, um, asia pacific you are in um, asia middle east and africa you are in central asia you are in latin so your company has as a presence in in uh, diverse geographies so that can become the basis for department uh, departmentalization or process if the organization is is too focused at the processes that it runs that can as well become uh, the departmentalized the, the base for departmentalization uh, what can be the examples of processes if you you have a process of uh, uh, you have a process for um, raw material allocation process of assembling process of um, finishing process of uh, quality check quality control uh, say for instance uh, i think here i should bring the example of a pharma company where the pharma the drug making process is 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 extremely standardized and extremely sensitive right from the moment when the company identifies a uh, a, a a potential molecule that can be used into a drug so uh, uh, so that, that that very ingredient uh, which they refer to as api active pharmaceutical ingredient identifying an active pharmaceutical ingredient in 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 some of some natural resources is the first step and then it goes through a spree of tests uh, to testify to authenticate that yes the discovery is valid and then it is put to the manufacturing wherein it goes through a lot of uh, uh, rigorous processes and then it is put to trials testing testing on animals testing on live cells testing on humans clinical trials and then it is sent for packaging and then it goes to branding and then it goes to the uh, uh, the uh, uh, federal drug authority uh, fda of us of a and then it is marketed uh, so it's a very sensitive very rigid and and a very standard highly standardized so that can be the if if process is your extremely sensitive extremely important base that can be the base for departmentalization likewise customers if you are into making of uh, customers where do you think with what kind of product do you think uh, is is fitting into uh, customer as the most important uh, yardstick or or base for departmentalization um, maybe i can think of uh, the apparel making companies where customers the customer segmentation is extremely important for your product you may be making apparels for all the ranges of uh, the age category for all categories of age uh, you may be making it for for kids toddlers below 10 you may be making for adults adolescents up to 20 you are making it for up to 30 so when you are making the same product but then the design and the nature of the product varies according to the segment of the customer that you are targeting then then customer becomes your base for departmentalization okay so i think that that was clear yeah, what can be the various bases for uh, departmentalizing your organization right okay so that's that that uh, uh,
calls in for chain of command as we have understood already chain of command is where uh, you have very clearly uh, defined uh, lines of uh, reporting between the managers and the subordinates which form the base for the organization structure okay just let's just quickly read out continuous line of line of authority that extends from upper levels of an organization to the lowest levels of the organization and and and, and clarifies who reports to who and uh, what always is uh, twinning with chain of command is unity of command must be observed whenever there is a chain of command which means one reportee should report to only one manager unity of command um, so that that clarity is attained through chain of command okay org structure various other uh, okay unity of command we have just uh, discussed authority the rights inherent in managerial position to tell people what to do and to expect them so which you refer to usually which is which is listed in something that you call as SLA the service level agreement which gives a list of uh, responsibilities uh, the uh, description of the job and the action points uh, that uh, the manager expects from the employees responsibility obligation or expectation to perform responsibility brings with it accountability okay unity of command will be discussed delegation what do you mean delegation? You delegate the job to the people uh, who are reporting to you, assignment of authority to another person to carry out specific duties. Okay. Line and staff authority. So you have managers can be classified into two, two broad categories, line managers and staff managers. Which are, what are each of these? Line managers are the ones who, who the, the employees report to and they have an accountability, they have a responsibility they have an obligation to explain, right? And the line manager has the authority to, uh, to evaluate, to give a feedback, to decide, to determine the prospects of the candidate. Whereas staff managers, they are more of advisory authority. They are not uh, the authoritative or decision-making managers, but they are advisory authority and they cannot issue orders to those in the uh, chain of command whereas line managers have the authority to issue orders to those in the chain of command okay that's uh, span of control we have discussed the number of employees who can be effectively and efficiently supervised by a manager we have discussed at length centralization and decentralization formalization we have discussed this too in the previous slides Mechanistic and organic, we have discussed this too, but we'll just quickly see uh, the difference with mechanistic. Mechanistic is highly specialized, um, rigid, uh, clear chain of command, narrow spans of control, centralization, and high formalization. Whereas organic is cross-functional, cross-hierarchical, free flow of information, wide spans of control, decentralization, and low formalization. Okay. Structural decisions are influenced by overall strategy of structural decisions what what are the various factors that influence the structural decisions uh, overall strategy yes of course is, is my strategy what what are the the chief components of my strategy am i an organization that runs by innovation or am i an organization that runs by uh, this the, the the manufacturing output or am i one which is led by the customer, uh, the, the, the customer demographics outside the organization <clears throat> or am I a B2B concern, am I a B2C concern or uh, am I uh, a, a manufacturing concern or a consulting concern, am I a service provider. So what is the, uh, the overall strategy that, that determines my uh, modus operandi is, is something that, that determines the structural decision. Size of the organization, am I a small company or medium range or am I a conglomerate, big company or a conglomerate? Conglomerate is conglomerate is a, is, is a group of organizations. Like if you can, if you can uh, um, call out a few illustrations, General Electric. General Electric is a conglomerate of several companies which are engaged into uh, making or offering of several numerous diversified products like General Electric is into banking, financial services, uh, is into making of uh, the jet engines, the turbo engines, the, uh, the insurance, 
or uh, it is into medical equipment, is it, it is into electrics and electronics, what not, right? So that, that makes General Electric. Likewise, in the Indian context, uh, we, we can look at Tata. Tata Sons is a conglomerate, <coughs> excuse me, whose various products are into uh, making of cars, making of FMCG products, making of electrics and electronics, uh, telecom, um, uh, retail, apparatus, likewise, so on and so forth. So, size of the organization, technology. <coughs> I mean, every high tech company where technology matters, extremely uh, important to my kind of decision. Or am I a medium tech or a low tech company? What is the tech kind of technology? Am I driven by ERP? Am I driven by cloud systems? Am I using artificial intelligence uh, intensively and, and extensively across the organization? Uh, the, 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 the level, the scale and the intensity at which I apply technology into my organization determines the structure of the organization. Likewise, <coughs> environmental uncertainty am i how exposed am i to the environmental uncertainty environmental uncertainty means uncertainty can hit us from from any corner it could be the company crisis or it could be the sector specific crisis or it could be economic crisis so from any of these uh, areas it can hit me and uh, hit hit the company and and uh, uh, and how exposed would I be? Say, for instance, the, when when we when the world was hit by the COVID uh, nineteen uh, crisis, uh, we had seen some sectors had uh, had taken a bad beating, whereas some sectors had actually done better. Like like if you look at the IT f firms, their expenses had gone down and their projects had gone up, and uh, um, and and they had uh, actually done even better than they were. Earlier, whereas if you look at uh, the hospitality and entertainment sector, uh, that was hit uh, severely. So same problem, hitting uh, two different companies in two different ways. So what is the degree of environmental uncertainty, and what is the exposure of your company to the to the scenario, is what determines uh, structure of the organization too. Okay, strategy. So, as I said, what is your, your, your what is the primary component of your strat company strategy? Are you an innovating company, or is your existence determined by how you minimize your costs and save money, or are you an imitation kind of company where, where you know, minimizing risks and maximizing profitability by copying market leaders requires uh, both organic and mechanistic mechanist. So, are is your company um, going for an organic model? organic structure or mechanistic structure. So, for instance, if you are an innovation centric company, you cannot afford having a mechanistic or inflexible uh, or a static kind of structure. You need to have more, um, more uh, organic, evolving uh, and, and which is characterized by certain qualities like uh, tolerance for failure, right? Failure should, should not be a thing of punishment or penalization rather it should rather be perceived as an attempt of another move towards a potential success right so whereas cost minimization where your product is a run of a mill kind of product which is which has nothing new in it which is input throughput output kind of product so um, it can it can afford to be more mechanistic because you are because such company is more likely to be more process driven uh, extremely standardized uh, with operating procedures and hence how you can save money, how you can make money is by saving money, cost minimizing, right? Imitation is a mix of both standard as well as imitating the innovation. So there is an element of innovation, may not be indigenous, but they make, uh, they, they, they imitate the first mover and, uh, and, and uh, hence you can uh, and hence they may they bring new services and products too so it needs a mix of both uh, mechanistic as well as organic okay some of the um, traditional designs uh, simple structure where the, the conventional pyramid like structures where you have low departmentalization wide spans of control where a centralization is uh, centralized decision making 
the decision making is resting on on one hand on top of the pyramid and uh, span of control is very wide which means one manager may have many people to report to right uh, centralized authority and little formalization whereas functional structure is is departmentalization is the basis for the structure of the organization uh, where you are defining the organization by its departments operations finance we have discussed this divisional structure where you are, where you are company you are, you are uh, designing the structure of a company by virtue of various uh, divisions uh, composed of separate businesses so you have various strategic business units which are spread across um, uh, across uh, the geographies and uh, Uh, and you design the structure of the organization accordingly composed of separate bis- separate business units or divisions with limited autonomy under the coordinated control of the parent corporation so for instance uh, you have you have the, the uh, say titan stores or the fast track stores you know or tanishk stores these are all the separate business units but we know the common thread that passes through all these three is one that is tata sons so it may not be directly involving itself uh, into or tata chroma for that matter the chroma tanishk titan all these are given autonomy to run their stores but end of the day they are coordinated they are monitored and they are accountable to these outlets are accountable to uh, the house of business called tata sons so that's that's a, a divisional structure okay that's those are a few strengths and weaknesses you can quickly scroll through a uh, simple functional divisional as you may agree simple structures are fast flexible inexpensive to maintain clear accountability whereas on the flip side uh, they have uh, they, they may not sustain as the organization gets keeps getting uh, bigger and uh, and centralized decision making may be risky if it goes wrong the suffering is across the board likewise functional uh, cost saving advantages are cost saving uh, and employees are, are are grouped with others to have similar tasks whereas weaknesses pursuit of functional goals can cause managers to lose sight of what is best for overall organization so it might become a little um, skewed to the managerial level ignoring the organization's interests functional specialists become insulated and have little understanding of what other units are doing so there may be the threat of building silos across uh, the functions uh, which is scenario where uh, finance may not be knowing what hr is up to and hr may not be knowing what operations is up to so they may be t- building silos uh, the un- uh, the invisible walls uh, between them and uh, the organization might become blindfolded to its own silos that it would build so that that could be a big weakness yes divisional structure focuses on results divisional division managers are responsible for what happened as we said so chroma whoever is the ceo of chroma is given the auto- autonomy is given the authority to drive the sales of chroma likewise tanishk um likewise titan but end of the day all these three ceos are are accountable are responsible to explain to the group ceo Uh, duplication of activities uh, and resources that might happen because the stores are so widely spread across distributed duplication of activities is quite possible they are not in in, in uh, coordination with each other they are uh, divided physically and strategically and uh, hence it might result in increase of costs cool so what are some of the contemporary structures team structures so people are companies are gradually coming out of the the uh, age old structures and they are they are adopting age old pyramidical structures they are adopting more contemporary structures like team structures as and when there is a requirement of team with certain team of individuals with certain uh, skills uh, the team is made which is in other words what the people refer to as the agile agile organizations are more driven by teams and projects project structures as you see entire organizations made up of work groups or self managed teams of empowered employees matrix structures where uh, where you see an organization which is which is which is uh, uh, 
uh, engaged in multiple projects concurrently and you are uh, uh, you have resources engaged in multiple projects uh, reporting to multiple managers of uh, of so many projects uh, the organization say for instance uh, you have uh, you have uh, an organization which is into um, say uh, offering services say uh, say a, a a consulting firm a, a, a consulting firm which may be which may be offering uh, tax services uh, audit services accounting services strategic services uh, m and a uh, mar merger and acquisition uh, consultation and then you may need the expertise of of various resources into each of these services you may need financial expertise you may need costing expertise you may need taxing expertise you may need strategic consulting expertise into each of these projects so imagine a horizontal and vertical arrangement of the services offered and the skills required so each of these skills may have to be reporting to each of those projects which is giving you a diagrammatic representation of a matrix like structure which which makes the organization structure uh, as a matrix uh, project structures as again we said as and when there is there is a there's a project starting you bring the people make the teams and then as the project terminates or completes you dismantle uh, the team and uh, uh, the team is redeployed into uh, another project wherever their skills may be of necessity so they are highly flexible highly agile highly um, uh, deployable um, across the organization okay so those are those are some of the advantages and disadvantages you can quickly go through we've discussed uh, uh, these team matrix boundaryless is, uh, is an organization which was introduced for the first time by jack welch of uh, general electric where he observed he realized that organization had built too many silos uh, across the verticals and there was a need to break the silos break those invisible walls and make the flow of information knowledge expertise skills experience more free across the organization and hence he created the concept of uh, uh, boundarylessness um, so as, as it suggests a structure that is not defined by or limited to artificial horizontal vertical or external boundaries includes virtual networked and modular types of organizations learning organization structure that supports an organization's capacity to continuously adapt and change so they are they're agile and adaptive responsive to the need for the hour as as you may be realizing this is these are the times in fact where we realize organizations are urging the employees the staff to reskill themselves upskill themselves as you know there is a need to understand the new technologies coming in in terms of big data or artificial intelligence what do you or, or agile or way of working uh, analytics you know all these are the new wave of of uh, required skill set um, that that organizations may be pressing the employees to uh, educate themselves in, uh, train themselves in, and certify themselves uh, so that that can define the structure of an organization. Okay, that's what we we, th we, we were just uh, referring to as a matrix organization. In uh, uh, okay, so that so we took the example of a uh, consulting firm here, uh, and the diagram suggests. Uh, the manufacturing firm, um, aerospace firm, which has so many projects, manufacturing, decision, design engineering, manufacturing, contract administration, purchasing, accounting. And then there are several projects, alpha, beta, gamma, and omega. So projects and verticals and, and, and the, the various uh, yeah, verticals, uh, each of which has an, import, has an intersecting reporting line. Uh, so the design group may be, in, may be involved in project alpha, project beta, gamma, omega. Likewise, a group or a team from each of these verticals is involved in, in the, each of those projects, overall giving it a, a matrix-like structure. 
Apart from those, you have virtual organizations where organizations, there's, there are no physical boundaries, they're connected electronically. Uh, network organizations where small core organizations that, that outsources its major business functions. Network organizations, say for instance, if, if uh, I can um, take call out a few illustrations like uh, um, many of these, uh, uh, you know, the sales driven uh, organizations like uh, uh, like Revlon or like uh, like uh, what do you call you know where where you have teams where where the organizations uh, is is more depending upon the outsourcing activity than by selling uh, the products by itself right um, yeah so modular organizations manufacturing organizations where where, where that that uses outside suppliers to provide product components uh, for its final assembly operations. So, you, you, you may have uh, realized many of these air condition makers who operate in Indian context, you know, uh, not all the AC makers actually make their AC components. So, for instance, all those uh, LG or Samsung air conditioners that you, you may have seen, they don't make it, but the components of the AC of the air conditioner are supplied by the actual maker, which is, uh, which is Voltaz, and then all that LG or, or Samsung would do is check the quality and assemble the product into one unit and then release it into the market. So those kind of organizations are modular uh, organizations. Okay, that brings us to the close of uh, the uh, chapter. Um,